All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So another practice is in the books, and this was actually, in fact, the last Jets practice before the Hall of Fame game on Thursday. So overall, it was a lighter practice, um, not a ton put on these guys, and the Jets are actually flying out to Ohio tomorrow. But before we dive into it, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to you guys, right? Uh, the support that you've shown the channel over the past couple of weeks, really since training camp has started, has been unbelievable, unbelievable, right? Uh, looking at like likes and stuff like that, like that, none of that stuff ever goes unnoticed and never flies under the radar. That stuff means a ton to me. Nobody's asking you to do that, but you're doing it anyway. So I just wanted to, to quickly say thank you. Like, it, it, that's awesome. So, so cool. So thank you. Now, as far as the schedule goes for the Jets over these next couple of days, uh, again, we talked about it. Today was the last practice before the game. So they're flying into Ohio tomorrow. Obviously, the game is Thursday. No practice Friday. It looks like the next practice is going to be Saturday. And the hope is Garrett Wilson and the ankle should be to, uh, should be good to go on that Saturday practice. Uh, still up in the air, but Garrett Wilson missed another day uh, today. It wasn't like this major shock or anything like that. It didn't sound like this was out of the ordinary. It sounded like okay, he's just, he, he needs more time to get that ankle right. I believe it was diagnosed as a low ankle sprain. So thankfully it's not the, the high ankle sprain where you have to miss an extended period of time. So look, it's, you know, it, it, what's weird is like, you know, we're, we're, we're monitoring these practices. They're, the Jets are in the headlines every day. They're on, you know, all these different uh, channels, all these different TV shows. It feels like that Bills game is like next week. I don't know about you guys, but like that's, for some reason, like I, I just, it feels like the season is right around the corner, but the reality, we're like 40, 40 plus days before that bill, uh, before that Bills game. Like there's a long time. There's a lot of time left, a lot of practices, a lot of preseason games, a lot of joint practices here. So I'm not rushing Garrett Wilson back, right? If somebody gets banged up in practice, just like Corey Davis too, you know, this is somebody who is, you know, he's been missing a lot of practices over these past uh, couple of days because he's coming back from the illness, uh, according to Salah. It's, it, it's not the end of the world. Of course, you want your wide receivers out there building chemistry in the new offense with Hackett, new QB, Aaron Rodgers. You got to get that, you know, feel for each other, but it's still so early, right? In the grand scheme of things, we are like two weeks away, essentially, from everybody's first preseason game. So... As of right now, I'm not too, too worried about it. So apparently there was a massive fight at Jets practice. Uh, I think it was Lakin Tomlinson, Tanzel Smart, and then Jermaine Johnson was also involved. I think uh, what was reported was a defensive lineman said something to Lakin Tomlinson, and that kind of set him off the edge, and then everything, like all hell broke loose uh, after that. I'll say this though, we've seen multiple Jets fights in a couple weeks, right? Like a lot. It, not, granted, I, I think this today's was the biggest. This tells me that we're, we're we're ready to go up against another squad. You know, I feel like this Hall of Fame game could not come at a better time. Um, you know, it, it, it's it as, as cool as practice is, as beneficial as practice is, going up against you know your own teammates day in day out to finally have an opportunity to go up against another team, right? To, to Especially something that's going to be televised. Everybody's, everybody's going to be tuning in. To have that opportunity, to have that spotlight, it's, it's time. It's time to play against a different team here. So I think the fighting and all the uh, physical aggression, all that kind of stuff should subside after that game, right? So I'm hoping, you know, by Saturday, there's not going to be uh, any more fights as, as, as far as, you know, the Jets fighting with themselves. You know, I'm sure there's probably going to be a couple scuffles in joint practices with the Panthers and the Bucks. We'll see how that plays out. But, you know, again, supposedly a massive fight today at Jets practice. So according to multiple reporters, it also sounded like the defense won the day again. Right, and this is becoming a common trend. I feel like, uh, you know, I sound like a broken record doing these practice recap videos saying, oh, the defense won. The defense looked better. The defense was having more success. Um, what's funny is like that's that kind of is a microcosm of the last uh, handful of seasons, you know, going back uh, to uh, Greg Williams defense, to Todd Bowles defense, to Rex Ryan's teams. You know, it was always defense first. It was always the defense was the better side of the football. Uh, of course, this year, hopefully... Uh, it changes right with the offense acquiring Aaron Rodgers and all these new different acquisitions, new pieces. But 
I, I think right now for the defense winning every single day, it's not the end of the world. Typically, the defense is further along than the offense, uh, as well as, you know, listening to Sala speak about it uh, and, and the players kind of speak about it in these press conferences. It 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 doesn't really first off the understanding that the defense is really, really good. That 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 has to be mentioned. That It's crystal clear. But then secondly, there's so much time before now in the start of the regular season. There's positional battles going on in the offensive line. Um, there, there's a lot of things that need to be worked out, and time will help those uh, different areas with building the chemistry, building the continuity, all these different things. Everybody getting on the same page, learning the Hackett system. Um, whereas we look at the defense, they are stacked at pretty much every position there. They're deep. They have pass rushers all over the place. There's no major changes. There, there, we didn't get that big money linebacker who's coming in and, and having to be the quarterback of the defense, but at the same time, learn the system. We didn't lose uh, Quinn and Williams. He's not holding out, right? Sauce Gardner um, is out there playing. DJ Reed, all these different guys, CJ Mosley. It's the same unit. Yeah, a couple tweaks here and there, but for the most part, it's the same unit. Offensively, tons of new faces, tons of new responsibilities, a lot of things to kind of get down. But I will say it seems like the defense is dominating these, you know, all these different practices because of issues on the O-line. Every day, there's multiple sacks. Every day, there's moments where whether it's a Quinn and Williams, whether it's a Jermaine Johnson, a John Franklin Myers, uh, a Bryce Huff, a Will McDonald, they are ripping by offensive linemen and getting in the backfield, stopping the run. I mean, I feel like I, I've I've said it like five times doing these recap videos, uh, like half, half, half the recap practice videos. It's like Quinn and Williams is getting in the backfield as Aaron Rodgers or as the quarterback is handing the ball off to the running back and Quinn is just right there ready to blow it up. I mean, that is insane. How big of an issue is the offensive line? I think right now it's the Achilles heel. I Again, we have so much time. I don't want to hit the panic button right now. Makai Becton is still ramping up. It does look like the center position is going to be Connor McGovern. Not set in stone, but that's, I want to say it's like 90-10 looking like it's going to be McGovern as the starter week one. Lakin's going to be a starter. AVT's going to be a starter. What's going on at tackle? It does feel weird saying, you know, thinking about this team winning the Super Bowl, thinking about this team making a deep playoff push and not knowing who the starting LT is going to be, not knowing who the starting right tackle is going to be. Um, little concerning, but Dwayne Brown is still not practicing. Once he gets back, I, I, I definitely feel good with Dwayne Brown out there, um, you know, on the left side. We'll see what happens at right tackle. The good news, we have multiple guys here. Max Mitchell, maybe it's Beckton, maybe it's Billy Turner. We we have options. Now, I do have a video planned. Uh, should be coming out maybe this week or uh, this weekend at some point where I'm going to be taking a look at a couple realistic offensive line options that the Jets could be looking at. You can make an argument they should be looking at at this point in time, just to be sure to, ha you know, having that added depth, having that added talent will not hurt anybody. The bottom line is Aaron Rodgers has taken this $35 million guaranteed pay cut. We better do something with it. And by no means am I saying rush into it, go spend money, you know, like all over the place, like without a care. Of course, we have to be smart and calculated, but we look at the start of the season. It's rough. We got the Chiefs, we got the Bills, we got the uh, Dallas Cowboys, New England, Philly. I mean, we, we play a bunch of playoff teams early on. I do not want to be two and five. Not in the slightest, you know, not, not at all. Luckily, towards the back uh, half of the season, it seems to lighten up. Washington, Houston, Atlanta, you know, I, I think we're, we're going to be to finish out the season like there's there's a nice stretch of games there we where we can literally rattle off four five straight wins uh it's not crazy to say that uh but in the early parts i don't want to get off to this to, to this rocky start and then be behind the eight ball by the time the trade deadline rolls around we have to make up all this ground but i'm getting too far ahead of myself here the bottom line is this maybe the jets should take a look at some o-line options we have money to spend it, it, it's an option it's an option. And then last but not least, Jason Brownlee. 
continuing to turn heads, continuing to make plays. In fact, uh, Dennis Wozak actually released an article, I believe it was yesterday, highlighting Jason Brownlee, you know, going back to school, talking about his journey, his path, uh, going undrafted, and just always having the confidence in himself, confidence in the school that, 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 that rolled with him initially in Southern Miss. It was totally awesome. I'll leave it linked down below in the uh, description box if you want to check it out. But uh, yeah, Brownlee, once again, making plays. Supposedly he made an OBJ style one-handed catch at practice. Um, that's awesome. That's really cool. But I'm more impressed with the consistency day in, day out, day in, day out with multiple quarterbacks. He's making plays with Rodgers. He's making plays with Zach Wilson. He's making plays with Chris Strevler. You know, a lot of people can make, a lot of wide receivers are going to have perfectly placed balls when A-Rod's throwing them the football. But to continue to have good days, to not show any sort of, uh, you know, regression or there's no slowing down in place. It just seems like the arrow is pointing up uh, and he's doing it day after day with multiple quarterbacks. To me, that is super, super impressive. Super impressive. So I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I really, really do appreciate it. And as always, go Jets.